Welcome to Testosterothon. 28 movies so manly, they know it ain't over until it's over. Except for this feature, which is over. The Expandables 3 made me a little nervous because even fans of the series seem to not like this one very much, and I'm definitely not a fan. The movie opens with Stallone, Statham, Courture, and Longren rescuing one of the original members of the team who was captured ages ago, and it took this long to get his location. It turns out to be Wesley Snipes, and I guess that's funny because he just got out of prison when the movie was released in real life. Anyway, I have to say that Snipes made this interesting, as I've always enjoyed him in action movies, though he unfortunately doesn't have a hell of a lot of screen time in this one. They hook back up with Terry Crews and blow shit up and move on with their next mission, which is to take down an arms dealer, which turns out to be Mel Gibson, another original expendable thought to have been killed by Stallone ages ago after going rogue. In the ensuing battle, Gibson definitely wins as he severely wounds Terry Crews, and they're all just in a bad place because he might die. Stallone fires the entire team and decides to go after Gibson with a new team that he doesn't have any emotional attachment to, so he goes to Kelsey Grammer and hires a new team of much younger action stars, characters, and actors I couldn't care less about. The only interesting one, and also the only one whose character I could be bothered to remember the name of, Galgo, played by Antonio Banderas, but he's rejected for being too old to be on the super young team of awesome hackers and parkour guys and, like, some chick. Yeah, who cares? You can probably guess what happens. I mean, Mel Gibson outsmarts them time and time again, and the new team gets captured, except for Stallone, who tries to go rescue them alone, but his old teammates all join him, joined by Schwarzenegger and Jet Li, who returns to remind you that he was once in this franchise. And also Harrison Ford, who replaced Bruce Willis after he thought $3 million for four days' work was an insult. What a dick. Anyway... The young and old Expendables all join together, including Galgo, who is funny in the way that he annoys every other character, and they blow shit up, and eventually Stallone and Mel Gibson face off, and blah, blah, blah. This one is kind of boring, like the first one, but it's not quite as bad. I'd say I like it a little better than the first movie, mostly due to Mel Gibson being a pretty good villain, and the little screen time that Wesley Snipes had. He pretty much killed it. Other than that, it's just dull and predictable, and it lacks the sharp wit or excitement that the second movie had, and that honestly wasn't even that great of a movie anyway. So I'd say I like the second one the best, and this one slightly less than the original, honestly, I thought it sucked. On the machismo meter, there's a lot of dudes here, and even the chick in the young team seems manlier than most guys, so that's a plus, I'll give it a 9. It might have been a 10, though, I did notice something strange, Sloan keeps losing facial hair with each movie. In the first one, he had a full goatee. In the second one, he had, like, the mustache. And in this one, he shaved. If there's a fourth movie, I fully expect a bald Stallone. For the actual score, I'm going to give it a five. It fits comfortably between the first two in terms of quality. If you're looking to enjoy one of those movies, just watch the second one. It's the most fun. But honestly, the whole Expendables thing was just overall very disappointing to me. Well, that's it for Testosterothon and the 2015... February movie feature. Of course, the next movie feature will be in October for 10 days, and then meet me back here in February of 2016 for another full month. And hell, that's a leap year. See you then.